16? Yeah. Um, oh, the whole thing. Oh, I guess, yeah, I probably should do this as an example. Yeah, so <laughs> let's do that. Um, so, um, so, yeah, try your best to follow. Um, um, but, you know, in case you're having difficulty, this is one of the scenarios that are covered in the note. But let me do this as an example, because this is a common one. And um, this is one where this, um, this calculation technique that's introduced in the post-it note uh, is very useful in avoiding a bunch of difficult algebra. So this is the situation. Um, you have a collision involving two particles. And they are, one of them is at rest. And there are many different scenarios that can be described in the same picture. That's what you have in your, um, in, in the post-it note. So let me call it relativistic collision. And I will deal with it in a general sense and then plug in the numbers after so that you can see the general approach we are taking. So we have a particle at rest. And we have another particle of higher mass that's going towards it. And it would be easy if they gave us the velocity, but they don't, right? So it's asking for the, what is the threshold energy? So this particle that's moving towards the other particle, you could characterize it with some velocity, or you could characterize it with some energy or momentum, if these, any of these quantities are given, then this problem becomes much easier to do. What's hard here is that they are asking for any one of these quantities. And working that backward is the hard part. If you're trying to go through this algebraically the way you might normally do, that's where um, the calculational technique that's introduced in the note is introduced. So let me quickly demonstrate that. So what the question, the information that the question is giving is, um, question of this type is giving is, um, so you have this collision, and when the collision happens, this is an inelastic collision. So after the collision, you get, um, you get, so you get some kind of a blob of thing that's uh, moving together, some kind of a final. And this blob of thing could be something of just a single mass big M, or in this question, it would, this blob of thing would be actually proton, proton, and a pi on. But um, it's asking for the threshold energy, so it's asking for the situation where all those three particles are moving together. They're not moving relative to each other because that's where they would have least amount of kinetic energy, right? Yes? Okay. So, um, so in this particular case, it's a blob of mass m, mass m, and another mass of pi on. Good? Yes? But let me deal with this in a more general sense, and let's say this is just a big mass, a big m. Yeah, either way, it's fine. So, all right, so you look at this, and does it feel like it's a question where we should use conservation of energy and momentum? Right? Okay, everyone has that intuition, that's good. So we start out with the conservation of energy and momentum. So we say sum of total energy before collision is equal to sum of total energy after collision. And we say sum of momentum before is also equal to sum of momentum after. And uh, you know, it's easy enough to write down these expressions. Let me do that. Um, the total energy before collision is the rest energy of this particle and the rest energy of this, oh, sorry, total energy of this particle. So let me call it, I guess it's asking for the threshold energy. So let's give this a symbol, E sub T. So this would, total energy before would be E sub T plus MC squared. Yeah. All right, um, total energy, so this should be equal to the total energy after, which would be, um, 
Well, um, it's a however fast to this mass is moving. And this is where it's, it may be tempting to write down gamma big M C squared, right? Um, you know, I guess I can leave it there for now. Let me just leave it there. So let's say you have conservation of energy expression, okay? And you have conservation of momentum expression. So that would be, um, so this has zero momentum. So you're just counting momentum of this. So let me just call it threshold momentum. That's equal to um, momentum after. So here you might be tempted to say gamma big MV. And what can get algebra algebraically very complicated is if you are now trying to you know, express these in terms of second set of gamma and V and you know, try to somehow solve them, eliminating these sets of gamma and V. And that's where I'm telling you that's algebraically complicated. Um, it, it'll take, I, I don't know if I can do it that way. <laughs> um, this is where the idea of Lorentz invariant is helpful. So the idea of Lorentz invariant is that there are certain combination of quantities that in whatever reference frame it gives you the same thing. So we talked about invariant interval in this class and we didn't spend as much time with the invariant mass and that's why I'm calling it invariant mass even though it's mass, is that um, there's this expression that is valid. Mass squared, uh, well, I guess I want to actually put it this way, mc, mc squared is equal to e over c squared minus momentum squared. So the way I would like everyone to eventually think about this is this is the inner product of the energy momentum four vector to itself. So you know, energy divided by C and momentum, that's the energy momentum four vector. When you take a dot product with it with itself, that's what this is. Time component squared minus the spatial component squared. And that is equal to the Lorentz invariant, which turns out to be mass. So that's how I want everyone to think about it. But if that's a little bit too far beyond, that if you feel uncomfortable thinking about it that way, you can think about this as a rewritten version of this energy momentum relationship that says that energy squared is equal to mc squared squared plus pc squared. This is the energy momentum relationship, right? It's a simple algebra going from here to here. So either way you think about it, it's fine. And either way, what you should notice is that this M here, this is the property of the particle. This is why the idea of invariant mass is important and much more useful than relativistic mass. Because with this mass, you can say wherever, however you find this mass, it's property of the particle, it doesn't change when a particle of mass m is moving at close to speed of light, it still has mass m. It doesn't have a different mass. Okay. All right, so this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to simply compute this quantity here. Energy squared minus momentum squared with appropriate vectors of c so that the units come out right. Yeah. All right, so let's do that. Um, so the left-hand side becomes this. This is the left-hand side. Um, so energy squared, so ET plus MC squared squared minus the momentum squared. Um, that's the left-hand side um, squared. And the right-hand side squared would be, uh, let me do that in different color. Right-hand side squared would be this. Where's my purple? Oh. Right-hand side would be this squared minus this squared, gamma big M C squared. Oh, wait, 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 I forgot a factor of C somewhere. 
sorry. <laughs> Let, I'll, I'll do that in red. Um, so energy squared minus the momentum squared gamma mv squared. And let me just put in the correct factors of C so that I, um, I guess I should be putting here, divide by C squared, divide by C squared. Everything good? Yes. Um, does uh, everyone recognize the second set of uh, expression as uh, simplifying? So you can factor out a factor of gamma squared. And when you factor out a factor of mc squared, or m squared times c squared, you end up with 1 minus v squared over c squared. So all of this really simplifies to big mc squared. Does everyone recognize that? It's taking longer than I'm <laughs> expecting to hear an answer. Yes, yeah, so let me just do the algebra quickly on the side here so that everyone can see that. Uh, let me factor out gamma squared. So with the gamma squared factored, it's a gamma squared um, times, in fact, let me do this. I'll factor out gamma squared, m squared, and c squared. So gamma squared, m squared, c squared. So out of here, I only have just one remaining, right? So one minus, here I'm factoring out gamma squared, m squared, and I'm factoring out a c squared that doesn't exist. So it has to be v squared over c squared. Yeah? Now, gamma squared is equal to 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared. So this gamma squared will cancel out this. So you end up with m squared c squared. This is sort of an illustration of why it was unnecessary to describe this as gamma and v in terms of, you could have just said this is the E final and P final. And when you had written E squared minus P squared, you would have seen from this, oh, I'm just gonna get invariant mass. Yeah. All right, so that's the right hand side, very simple, just uh, the mass here. So left-hand side takes a little bit more work. Um, let's see what cancels out, how it simplifies, and um, how we can get to the final answer. So the left-hand side, let me expand this out, and we will look, uh, work through carefully what that turns out to be. So I have e squared divided by c squared. So et squared over c squared plus the, um, the, the, the cross term, two times this times this divided by c squared. So plus two e t um, m, and then c squared divided by c squared cancels out. So this is what I have. And then um, this thing squared plus m squared, and it's c to the fourth power divided by c squared, so c squared. Yeah, so that's just this expanded out, and then I have minus p t squared. This is where it helps to learn to group um, correct uh, group some terms together. This term in particular, I would like to group it with this. Do everyone see why? What is e squared minus uh, momentum squared? It's the invariant mass, right? By the way, when I'm saying it out loud, I'm skipping C's, but when I'm writing it down, I'm writing down correct factors of C. So, so I can combine these two to get um, mc squared, right? And then plus, I have this still, 2etm, and this mc squared, well, all right, so I have two of them instead of just one of them. So I have two mc squared. So that's the left-hand side. This is the right-hand side. From our starting point, we know these two are equal to each other. So this is equal to that. And now the rest is actually pretty simple algebra. 
because it's a matter of, well, all these are constant, so it's you know, move that over uh, and solve for E of t. And well, I guess while we have done most of the work, so let's just finish it. Uh, let me solve it for E of t. So when you do that, what you get is E of t is equal to this thing minus 2mc squared. Um, so capital MC squared minus 2mc squared divided by 2m. Um, and here, uh, let me just double check that the energy that they want is the total energy. It doesn't say kinetic energy anywhere. Uh, not be, yeah, includes the rest energy. So it's just asking for this actual total energy, not the, the kinetic energy only. Uh, let's plug in the numbers. And I'm going to make the use of the fact that the way our units are specified, I can actually essentially ignore factors of C. Because um, the way the, that's how it kind of works out. If you do the calculation carefully, all these factors of C will just serve to cancel out these factors of C in the units themselves. So, no, I forgot a factor of C here somewhere, I think. Where did I forget the fact of factor of C? Um, no, 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 I, I think it actually works. Yeah, yeah. I didn't fact forget a factor of C, but I'm going to ignore all the factors of C now <laughs> because that's how my units work. So let me just plug in all those numbers. Um, all from alpha. So, um, I, well, let me do it this way. So this big M, it's mass of the protons plus the pi on. So that would be 938 times 2 plus 135. So 938 times 2 plus 135, oops, plus 135. So that's this. Uh, oh, I need to square that. And then subtract 2 times the proton mass, 938 squared. And then divide it by twice the proton mass, 2 times 938. And my units are going to come out to be MeV. Um, well, I get 1, 2, 1, 8 MeV. Let's plug it in and see what I get. 1, 2, 1, 8 MeV. Um, be embarrassing if it's wrong. All right, good, it's right. <laughs> so that's how you do this calculation. And once again, you have a written example in the note that I posted. And this is the how you should approach this calculation, not trying to solve for gamma and V algebraically. You, you should use the Lorentz invariant.